There's a reason why there are zero restaurants in the history of the universe that serve Jewish food to non-Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> delis, excuse me, delis. We stole those, but to be fair, yeah. they are now considered <laughs> Jewish. They're they're Jewish now. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can't get a ham and cheese there. And bagels are not really Jewish. again stolen, okay. but ours like now. Going, yeah. Ours yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the point. They're like the <laughs> West Bank of food. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when we're feeling retro. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am fantastic, Noah. You know who's an incredible actor? No idea. Nobody from this fucking movie, Noah. <laughs> Nobody. No. Nobody. No, not, not remotely. Really kind of fucks up that whole... Uh, format that Heath does. And we're excited to welcome back this week's guest masochist, Rachel Wax, is either a comedic magician or a magical comedian. I'm not really sure. Rachel, welcome back. I'm so happy to be back. And I just, I feel my heart is so warm after watching this movie because I didn't think that I was good at writing, but it looks like <laughs> I could be a screenwriter. It looks like it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> nope. mm -hmm. All right. So tell us, Rachel, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Mistletoe and Menorahs, the story of the most boring human beings learning about extraordinarily basic holiday tropes that they somehow didn't know about until their early 30s. What the <laughs> fuck was that? This is this like these people like I, I keep feeling like there was a prequel where they went through time or something or came from another dimension. I kept waiting for there to be some conflict and it just never came. Yeah. No. No, I was I was expecting a backstory about head injuries for the both of them. There, Never there you go. Yeah, nope. exactly. Exactly. Or a curse by an evil elf that Santa had spurned at some point. Yeah. Literally nothing. No, nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Just these people were just somehow unaware of holidays. OK, so Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Oh, <gasps> well, if you love Christmas. But you were literally born yesterday. <laughs> you will love this movie. This movie would be an excellent educational film for an easily offended alien. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we're going to talk about this a lot, I'm sure. It's one thing that Christy, our protagonist, the lady, doesn't know about Hanukkah. I get it. America, the Jews are our dirty little secret. But we're supposed to believe that our male protagonist, whose name I did not bother to fucking learn, <laughs> is a Jew living in New York City who's never heard of and is unaware of Christmas? Yeah, right, right. No, it, like he might as well be pronouncing it Christmas when he first shows up <laughs> in the film. Truly, that is what I thought. And I never celebrated Christmas going up, but you know where I live? America. Right. So I knew everything about Christmas forever. Yeah. What the fuck? Was, it's not like he was from elsewhere. It's not like he grew nope. up in Israel and this was his first year in America. No, yeah. All right. So anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I want to nominate this for being the best worst Jewish things written by non-Jews. Ooh, for they sure. They couldn't find There's a single Jewish writer <laughs> in, in, in the, in the there TV. There was nothing in it that they were like, oh, the thing you light the candles, right? Like there was nothing going on here that was actually true about Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was going to go. This is a bit of a curveball, but I was going to go with best worst blatant metaphor for a romance between Eli and myself. <laughs> oh, right, I'm listening. Right. It's, it's, you know, he's got an annoying order at Starbucks. He gets angry and pissy with people in line. He's a, you know, comedic writer that doesn't know how to punctuate. He's a punctuation pedant that can't write enough comedy. If only they could get together. There are so many moments in this movie where I'm like, okay, well, that's now you're just being blatant about hey, it. Hey, Noah, <laughs> did you write this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I am offended like I have never been offended <laughs> before. <laughs> and see, I was going to go with best worst bad boyfriend. Mm, oh, I love really him so much. Yeah. <laughs> Look, every uh, Lifetime, Hallmark, whatever the fuck channel this, this shit was spit out of movie needs a 
bad boyfriend, mm-hmm. right, for the female protagonist to have, right? <laughs> but they write this bad boyfriend so lazily that essentially what makes him bad boils down to not coming to pre pre Christmas Eve. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, do they sell that as the worst thing in the universe. It was it was quite lovely. All right, well, I'll tell you what, there's a ton of shit that Rachel and Eli are going to have to explain to me coming up, and they'll probably need me to tell them what wreaths, lights, and trees are. So we're going to pause for a minute to study up, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the script-by-numbers bullshit that is mistletoe and menorahs. From the makers of mistletoe and menorah. I love you, Chet. And I love you, Chava. Comes the story about two worlds joining together. Are you ready to meet my parents? Uh Uh-oh. And how learning and love aren't so different after all. Okay, so my aunt just got a nose job, so make sure you say how young she looks, but do not mention the nose job. Uh, but, But I've never met her before. Doesn't matter, okay? Also, Grandma doesn't eat sugar, fat, oil, wheat, meat, or dairy, but you should bring a chocolate cake. Wait, why would I do that if she doesn't eat? So she can eat some, but only because you brought it. So so she does eat dairy and wheat? No, pay attention. This Christmas, mistletoe at Pepto-Bismol. Can I have a blowjob now? No. No. And we're back and we're going to open up on a logo that is desperately trying to get you to mistake it for some real production company's logo, right? (laughs) The exact (laughs) average of nine other logos. Is this a musical? Guys, the credit thinks it's a musical. (laughs) I genuinely thought this was going to be a musical and the logo, I completely agree. It looks like whoever made it separated out each letter of every word and used five different fonts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to open up in New York City where this movie will selectively take place. I just wrote in my notes, I miss not here. <laughs> yeah. And then we oh, we're, now we're going to meet our protagonist. Now, this person wakes up at 625 a.m. So I already cannot relate to them in any fucking way. But beyond that, she wakes up smiling at 6.25 a.m. I was so infuriated by this. She woke up with a full face of makeup, her hair done yeah. with a big smile. Like, cunt. That was my first thought. Like, fucking cunt. Who wakes up like that? I look like a gargoyle who crawled out of a drain in a Stephen King novel in the morning. Of who are course, you? Because it's morning. Yeah. And then, and then this is weird to me. She wakes up. She's got this little advent calendar sitting right next to her bed so the first thing she does in the morning is eat a piece of chocolate with like morning breath yeah wouldn't it taste like morning breath (laughs) there's a spectrum for how into christmas you're allowed to be and on either end is infinite sadness she's on the two into christmas end and and we're gonna learn that in this movie (laughs) now i've never celebrated christmas but like the few times my roommate has brought an advent calendar home you do it at night right Like, it's a little, like, nighttime chocolate treat. Like, who's waking up in the morning? He's like, you know what I could go for? (laughs) Really shitty CVS chocolate. That's what I would like at this time. (laughs) A Ferrero Rocher. Yeah, exactly. A generic Lintz. Mm, morning <laughs> food, right? Quick, before I brush my teeth. Yeah, okay. So so we ca- we follow her to work. We shoehorn in a couple other characters. We get her friend, right? I just wrote friend, sister, person, coworker. It's, it's her coworker friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exposition wall to play tennis off of. <laughs> yeah, it, that's it exactly. And then just for no reason, the friend, while she's talking to her on the phone, is like, I'm looking at my son's teacher who is hot and Jewish. <laughs> He's not hot. He is Jewish. He's not hot. Um, can confirm, not hot, just very clearly the hottest actor that they could afford. Yes. That's how actors <laughs> are priced, right? Like by yeah. attractiveness. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, I want somebody on like a seven on, oh, yeah. Oh, can I get a six? And they definitely ticked the box for real Jew, which limited their results down to like (laughs) four guys and I'm two of them. So they were like, I guess we're going with this guy. Oh, Oh, okay. Yes. All right, so now we cut to an office filled with Christmas spirit to an insane degree. 
Right? <laughs> this office is a fucking riffra violation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the very first thing that's going to happen is these actors horrifyingly failing at a almost dropped my paper pantomime. Yes. Oh my god. Yes, because she's so, so lazy. Desperately dropping this paper for like. 18 seconds before the other actors like, oh shit, I was having a donut. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And let me tell you, I have worked in a lot of corporate offices in this country. And let me tell you, none of them decorate this much for the holidays. They would get in trouble. <laughs> yes. And also, they don't want to spend the money on it. This does not exist. Corporate offices in this country don't decorate this much for a mass shooting that took place in that office. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, so we we quickly established that she's got a big presentation this morning and she's going to get the big promotion if she gets this new client. Yeah, I missed this part because the, I guess, villain of the movie, the boss's assistant, was distracting me because he had apparently just walked out of a drag show and didn't have time <laughs> to get out of his makeup. Did you see this actor's eyeshadow? Yeah, it was insane. It was it a little was, overboard. I thought he had a black eye. I thought he had just gotten <laughs> hit. Oh, that's entirely possible. Yeah, maybe they just filmed it out of order or something. But yeah, yeah. But the business is very business business. And this was bound to happen eventually, right? <laughs> we have watched a whole bunch of these fucking movies. She walks into this presentation and I realized that suddenly it's a business that I actually know about. Oh. <gasps> And it's just as painful as I always figured it would be. Her job is literally the job I had when I started podcasting. She's a toy <laughs> designer. For, and, and so she walks into this, this meeting and she does the job I've done like 800 fucking times in front of a bunch of guys in suits and shit to present your ideas for toys. And they have no idea how any of that works. You cannot in nope. any way define who is what in this relationship. She's <laughs> going like, we'll do all the design and the marketing. All you do is supply the plastic and the rubber. I'm like, well, then is he a fucking rubber wholesaler? <laughs> Why are you pitching to him? None of this makes sense. By the way, we have now finished this movie. I still don't know what she does. No. Yeah. Or him. What company is this? What <laughs> service are they offering? We'll do the company for you then what would they do <laughs> I just, I... you just sit there and be the boss man <laughs> you're the boss boss if you told me this scene was written after someone was shown a toy through a plate glass window and then had to improvise <laughs> from there having never seen one before it makes a ton of sense oh Jesus Christ that was it was so bad and I thought about that and I'm like oh man because you know we've watched movies about every different business and shit and I think like Man, there are some people that are watching every one of these having this much pain and suffering, <laughs> and suddenly I could see eye to eye. Yeah. Also, are we going to talk about this guy's beard? It was literally the top half of it was red, and the bottom half was white. He has like a Christmas ombre beard. <laughs> it was very distracting. I don't know what went wrong. Was it a salon issue? Does it grow that way? But we can't just ignore it. The movie skates right over it. Yeah, like he started to color it, but then he lost his interest in it or he ran out of stuff. He's like, hmm. Insane. Boy, I, thought, I thought one bottle would do the trick. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, after she does her little pitch, that this fucking Neapolitan bearded guy turns to her and she, he says, you know what I took from that is that you sure do love the holidays. Which is the fucking... Go! This is the craziest thing <laughs> to take from her presentation. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah, so he says, you know what? It, it occurred to me while you were presenting this that you should come to my holiday party. And she's like, I'm an expert in the holidays. And he's like, good, I'll put you in charge of some of the events at my holiday party. But what was also so crazy is he wasn't like, just come to the holiday party. Mm -mm. He was like, come pitch your ideas at our yeah. holiday party. You know, that thing that's supposed to be a fun break for everyone who's been working hard all year. Let's surprise them with work at that event. <laughs> yes. Okay, to be fair, he is Jewish. That's pretty accurate. All right, we've all had Jewish bosses. That's fair, that's fair. All right, who wants to do some fun Christmas inventory? <laughs> so... My favorite part of this scene was when she found out she got invited to the party, she gave herself a high five. Now, I don't know if she was planning on killing herself later or was surprised that she then had to. <laughs> it was very upsetting. All right. So now it's time for us to meet dude bro boyfriend. 
So our main character, her name is Christy. She calls her boyfriend and, you know, he can't even be bothered to stop working out to talk to her. Douche, bad guy. Ba bad boyfriend. So weird. Uh yeah. So now, and what I love so much about this scene is the idea is that she's supposed to be calling and explaining what happened in the last scene, but what happened in the last scene makes no sense logistically, so she can't, right? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> it is entirely nonsensical. And he's like, did you get it? And she's like, yes, but I have to come up with a toy line. Then what were that, you pitching? What? <laughs> what was that then? Then what did you do? I was pitching us being the toy company now. <laughs> and But we're also supposed to like, we already get the idea he's not a great boyfriend because he says, do I get credit for being a supportive boyfriend? Yeah. Which, fun fact, makes you not a supportive right, boyfriend. Yeah. But also, she <laughs> she's like, oh, you're working out? You didn't have to pick up the phone. And he was like, well, I knew the call was important. So I picked up and we're supposed to think he's like godly for this. Like this movie thinks that being a good boyfriend means picking up the phone sometimes. Is that why Heath is not on this episode? <laughs> 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 well, we're going to actually find out in the next scene why Heath isn't there, because this is because this is also the second time that her and her friend have a little coffee exchange, a little coffee wink. Coffee uh, humor. <laughs> Gilmore Girls. Classic. Yeah. Shut up, Eli. Gilmore Girls was not for you. Yeah. <laughs> I have an IQ that could be measured without a picture of an elephant, a man, a person, a camera, another camera. <laughs> I don't like these personal attacks. All right. So, okay, wait. Now, I want to step outside the format just a little bit here. For this next scene where the two friends go to the coffee shop, if you don't mind, I'd like for us to each just write down the first thing we wrote in the notes on this scene. In the order that we appear in the doc, I'll, I'll, I'll start. I wrote... Like, her order is supposed to be comically involved, but it's literally and genuinely not as bad as Eli's normal Starbucks order. What did you write, Rachel? <laughs> I wrote, as somebody who's gotten coffee for Eli a few times, this is literally Eli's <laughs> coffee order. I'm glad we all had the same thought. And Eli, what did you write? <laughs> they stole my Starbucks order. I will sue them. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times that I have had to go into Starbucks and be like, and he, um, my friend wants it to be 110 degrees. Oh, Jesus. Like, and, I, and then I have to be like, he's a child. That's why. <laughs> he's, a baby. he's a little baby. She didn't want soy milk, at least. Okay, so anyway. So, Ugh, I know. Right, but, but the point of this scene is for them to have the, uh-oh, he's a Jew moment, right? <laughs> yes, this is where we find out that she was confused that they were both speaking in vagaries that only would have made sense for the plot of this movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, why would a Jewish person look at Christy, who is a blonde shiksa, deaf a fucking nationally and be like, this is a fellow Jew who likes Hanukkah. Okay. Well, yeah. Right. In the fucking in that in that corporate office that was filled to the brim with wreaths and Christmas trees and shit. <laughs> right. I don't know how he thought she would be into Hanukkah. And also, how did she not know he was Jewish? Right. Did she look at him? It was very clear. <laughs> she was like, a Jew. Did you see his him? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But she turns to her friend and she's like, oh, no. And she means, oh, no, I've got to learn about Hanukkah. But this movie is so much better if you interpret it as her being a vicious anti-Semite and not wanting to work with a Jewish <laughs> Oh, that's how I watched this movie. Was that not? Okay. I let him touch my hand. So <laughs> I need to rewrite my notes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, so they sit in the coffee shop and discuss the Jewish question. <laughs> and her friend immediately points out that the conceit of this movie is beyond stupid because she <laughs> takes out her phone, Googles Hanukkah, looks at it and is like, yep, there's all the information I need. Right. Yeah, exactly. All on one page. <laughs> However, will I learn about Hanukkah? So I just want to point out early on that for anybody listening who doesn't know this, Hanukkah, not a big deal ho holiday. No, right. No Jews give a flying fuck about Hanukkah. It's only blown up because of Christmas. The theme of the party just needs to be blue and white. Yep. And then you get some chocolate coins. There. I did it, guys. I just played a Hanukkah party. And by the way, this isn't even her party. No. Why is she acting like she needs to plan stuff? She she got invited five minutes ago. 
go. I've I've been to a lot of like I've, I've been to mitzvahs and shit, but nobody ever like asked me to say a fucking prayer. <laughs> what, of course no, not. That's insane. Yeah, right, right, exactly. But but it is amazing because this won't be the last time that some character in this movie will undercut the shit out of the plot by just going like, "This is not complicated. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not hard." But of course, she says like, all right, well, y you Googling it couldn't make a movie. Oh, I know that hot teacher from earlier is Jewish. He'll be the love interest. Let me ask my son's teacher. He's a fucking Jew. Sorry, he's a Jewish. He's a Jewish. <laughs> he's a Jew. He's a, you know, he's funny. He's very funny. He's very New York. His pockets are full. <laughs> so, God. And as is his nose. I don't know with what. Oh, All right. So then in the next scene, she's walking through the snow and her dad calls her. and He's like, come on, tell me the plot. You know, <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, this is just to sum it up in case grandma falls asleep in front of the Hallmark movie. I understand why they need to do this. <laughs> yeah. But every time this dad calls and she has a loud recap the plot FaceTime phone call with the dad. I just want her to bring up the like, so are you uh, and mom finally going to see a counselor? Damn it, I told you no. <laughs> <laughs> I do wish that. Meanwhile, she's, she explains the entire plot of the movie to him and her dad's like, yeah, it doesn't really sound like a big deal. Yes. <laughs> yes. It sounds He's like a you're attending a party. I don't That's, know. Sounds like a lovely Don't time. wear a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to wish everybody a Merry Christmas the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> also, I would just like to interject here. Um, her dad looks like he's 35 and he is smoking. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Why? Hey, everybody, you should watch this movie to see who Rachel thinks a 35 year old is. It explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> This man is in his mid sixties, and Rachel's no, like, "No way, no, he's, mommy, he's, like, he's, <laughs> why don't you put that cane down so I can tell you what I want for Christmas, Dad? <laughs> I mean, boyfriend, husband." <laughs> Dude, can you stop looking through my porno? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a huge invasion of my privacy. <laughs> No, but yeah, but so he spends the entire scene undercutting the plot, going like, "Yeah, no, I'm I'm sure he wouldn't expect you to be an expert. He's he didn't assume you were Jewish. I don't think there are probably no stakes at all in this movie. <laughs> but this is also where we introduce the fact that he wants to make sure that she's coming to the what he calls pre Christmas Christmas Eve Eve dinner or some convoluted shit like that. I'm so confused. Yeah, yeah, I'd make fun, but my family's Thanksgiving starts the Sunday beforehand, so I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right. So, so so she she gets done talking to her dad, sits down for some work. She puts on some Christmas music, some lyrical Christmas music while she does her typing. Yeah, she goes, uh, Siri, or whatever the Hallmark version of Siri she's allowed to say is, mm -hmm. play Holiday Playlist 43, and the music we hear, definitely a song on the 43rd playlist of holiday <laughs> songs you make. Yes, yes. Yep. Actually, she didn't say Siri. What she said was, Rudolph? She named her fucking oh, Alexa wow. Rudolph because she just is so in love with yep. Christmas. Yep. That is her singular personality trait in this yep. film. Again, if you picture this character in June, it's a dark, dark death of a salesman as <laughs> play. I was thinking about that because her apartment looks like the Christmas aisle of TJ Maxx. Yes. Like I can <laughs> smell the fake nutmeg candles that she's got burning. But like. Where is she storing that the rest of the year? Right, because she lives in New York. Or do you just have it up all the time? Right, I, I have to feel like she like throws like funerary black shrouds over the wreaths <laughs> and shit the rest of the year or something. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, okay. So, but then her boyfriend shows up, right? He brought a nice romantic hamburger for her. And then he turns on the, the he walks in and he's like, hey, hon, I brought you a, a burger, but quick so nobody thinks that I'm the male love interest. Let me turn on the game, which is girl movie for bad. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We're allergic to sports. <laughs> exactly. Clearly. My eyes got itchy watching this movie. <laughs> so, and she's like, oh, you know, boy, I'll tell you what, if you could get me a coffee, that would be great because this movie hasn't heard of coffee in the home. And <laughs> he says, hey, I already got you one, but it's not the weird shitty coffee order that you like because I would be embarrassed to walk into a Starbucks and order that. And I get it. I get it. I know it's supposed to be he's a shitty boyfriend, but I get it. Hey, 
Noah, I know for a fact Lucinda's coffee order, and it is almost as sugar filled as mine. It is. And I've seen you order that with a straight face multiple times, sir. Multiple times. <laughs> no. You... I mean, it is so dicky of him to be like, I brought you coffee, but one that I know you won't like. Yes, right, it's not right. at all your order. <laughs> and then he's like presumably coming over to like help her and like feed her. But then she ends up bringing him his dinner while he's watching the game. Oh yeah, no. Clearly, he's an asshole, and he's there like distracting her with the fo- with a basketball game while she's trying to do work. But like, how is he more distracting than lyrical fucking music? I don't know. I just, I don't understand <laughs> I don't how people know. can do that. I don't know. And then she's like, he's like, oh, how did the presentation go? She's like, well, I know I need to come up with a whole new toy line. And I was like, if you didn't know that you had to do that for the presentation, you're so bad at your job. Like, yes. You're really <laughs> bad at your, you don't even know what your job is. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Why are you trying to pitch yourself as a toy designer to this company if you have no ideas for toys? <laughs> it was so weird. That is so step one of this business. <laughs> I want to sell you my book. I haven't come up with a title or an idea for the plot yet. What? But you just <laughs> tell me. All you need to provide is the paper and I'll do the and writing the and the printing. You'll give me the paper and the letters and I will put together. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me to your home. I'll do the shit out of your religion. <laughs> All right, so the next day she wakes up, but this time conspicuously devoid of holiday cheer. How is she ever going to learn enough about Hanukkah in time? <laughs> and it's time for their meet cute. Yes. Oh my God, yes. Oh, okay, so this is so sloppy because, right, you have to start off with some kind of animosity between the two characters. That is the golden goddamn rule of romantic comedies. Well, if you don't, then there's going to be no conflict in the movie, Noah. In this one, yes, right, exactly. It's not like a new conflict arises at some point, but yeah. So, and then, and of course, it's the Eli and, and Noah meet cute, right? She's got her weird coffee order and he's making fun of it behind her in line and then she turns around and he has to do that oh fuck I didn't think she was going to turn around moment (laughs) he has to lean into it so weird yeah but what's even better is they wrote funny lines for not funny actors look (laughs) I'm sure these people are nice right and they're both very attractive or at least the six or above okay they don't need to be funny until they reach 40 maybe 50 years old or as rachel would call it 21 so the fact that they wrote comedy for these two actors to do is just cruel because he's like man what a coffee order and she's like you're a kike and then they just pause and are like, meet cute and cheap. So what was weird is I read your note about that and then was like, did I miss a joke? Like, I didn't even register that they were trying to make jokes. Also, they're fine looking, but he's genuinely one of the most generic looking human beings I've ever seen. I think if you search Caucasian man in Google, his face comes up. Yep. Yeah, right. No, if you if you gave an AI 800 white men, it would kick out this guy as the in-between. Yeah. And, yep. and I, I Googled, by the way, because I was like, this actor doesn't look Jewish because, you know, he looked kind of normal and attractive. He, mm-hmm. he On his Wikipedia, it says, yeah, he grew up Jewish, but, you know, <laughs> So the, <laughs> the best they could find is that a person as Jewish as I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy, the actor's name was Epstein. I was pretty sure he was genuinely. <laughs> All right. So then she goes to her table and she's like, I'm going to wait on this cute teacher. while I fume about that rude guy in line. And then he shows up at her table with an apology muffin. His term, not mine. Right. Oh, what was he even apologizing for? I mean, this was such a non thing. Well, okay, so it, like making fun of somebody's order, a stranger's order in front of you online at Starbucks is kind of a dick move unless their friends are there already doing it and they egg you okay, on. We lead very different which, lives. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, that's a dick fucking move. Like bitching at that guy from behind him in line would have been fine, right? <laughs> but at any rate, but you're definitely making it more fucking awkward when then you walk up on this young woman and you're like, here, eat my muffin. You know, like, dude, shut up. Please eat this pastry I touched. It's for you. (laughs) (laughs) And again, what happened here is they tried to write a conflict, but, you know, Gam Gam needs to fall asleep to this movie so they couldn't actually, like, have them be mean to each other. She just sits down and goes, insanely rude. I wrote my notes. Holy shit, imagine what would happen if one of these people met Noah. They would (laughs) die. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, so, but mutual friend shows up and she's like, oh, look, you two have already met. And then they're like, oh, no, we were here to meet each other. <laughs> and this is where the movie will introduce that not only does she not know about Hanukkah, which is a dumb enough premise for a movie, but he, a public school teacher in the country of the United States, doesn't know about Christmas. Yep. It was insane. He got a phone call where he was asked to pick up a wreath and fruit cake. And he was like, uh, a wreath and fruit cake? But those are ca- Christian words. <laughs> <laughs> You're yes. holding a phone. Just Google either of those things. <laughs> yeah, the spelling on wreath is a little weird. I'll admit, I'll admit, but you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so that's the goddamn plot of this stupid fucking movie. His girlfriend wants him to throw a Christmas party for her, her dad, which is a weird thing to ask your Jewish boyfriend to do. I'm going to be so honest. Weird. Why don't you yeah, just do that? throw a Christmas party and invite him? <laughs> but <laughs> but that's on his end. And then, of course, she needs to know enough Hanukkah to lead a Hanukkah festivities at the Hanukkah party. So that's how they're going to. That's the reciprocal relationship that they enter into here. But like. They're both in a pickle because they're the only ones who can teach each other right. about the hot lot. Like, you're the only Jew I've met. And like in all of New York. Yes. You're Christmas lady. And she's like, you need a wreath. I've got a wreath guy. I'll hook you guys right up. She shouldn't get to vote. That's what I, I think that should be the threshold of who gets to vote. Oh, definitely a Trump voter. No question. This girl and her parents are Trump voters. And if you ask her why she cries. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So after establishing that fruitcake is like Christian ecstasy, only, you know, certain people know who to talk to to get that shit. They establish that they will set aside their line altercation and help each other for the holidays. And then they muffin on it, which is nowhere near as sexy as it sounds when I say it like that. No, it is not. It was supposed to be a very charming moment. And I was just like, "Ugh, you're both just like touching each other's food. This is gross. <laughs> the whole post COVID world is ruining movie watching, though, right? Like whenever you see a seriously group of oh, people I can't together wait to sweatily palm someone's baked goods again. It's the first thing I'm going to do the day I get the vaccine. <laughs> I'm going to spit in your mouth. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to eat it. <laughs> OK. All right. So now they have the, the mutual friend leaves. They have to go holidaying. So the first thing they have to do is go get a menorah. And they realize uh -oh. they realize they have to fill a scene with a menorah and they fail instantly because she's like, is that a candle holder? And he's like, <laughs> yes, it's a candle. Holder. He reacts. He's trying to drag out the fact that the answer to that is, yep. Well, no, his answer is, boy, we've got a lot of work to do. And I'm like, well, OK, but she did nail that one. <laughs> yes. And that's it, by the way. Like, yep. The end. Well, yeah. It, he says, yeah, it's pretty crazy that that Hanukkah party is eight days away. And she's like, why is that crazy? And, and, and then the movie's just like, see, she doesn't know anything about Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what? How do you light a candle? She seems very confused. And he's like, welcome to my Jew store. You can get anything Jew here. Yeah, the Jews are us store that they walk into. Right. So she's we cut to this like in media rest with her going like, wait, you light one candle a night. Hold on. Let me write down all this confusing jewelry. <laughs> you know, so insane. And then they walk into I shit you not little mitzvahs and she walks in and I love this like oh wow this is so wonderful so much tradition I'm like an anti-Nazi if you think about it some of my best <laughs> friends are Jewish <laughs> yes I <laughs> and the store owner slash sole employee slash grandmother of the male protagonist will be introduced here and she's like yes Jewish traditions go back 6,000 years no, they fucking don't. Okay. <laughs> I've heard Jews repeat this lie all the time. Jewish no. traditions go back max 150 years. And that's if like great, great grandpa Poland is to be believed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also, and well, now I feel very self-conscious about it. I made a note that the grandmother looks so young. I was like, how is his grandma like 50? But now I'm worried that she's 86 and I just don't see age. She's clearly like 24, 25 years older than this actor, right? Like, so yeah, she she had a kid at 12, we had a kid at 12 if she's his grandmother. No. Yeah. <laughs> it was so insane. No, you nailed it on the women, Rachel. You nailed it on the women. Oh, okay, great. 
So yeah, so the, so Christy looks around the store and she's like, hmm, candle holders and little hats. I'm getting that mostly Jewishness is about family. And she's like, yeah, family, family. That's what you would think when you saw candle holders and little hats. Look, I know the conceit <laughs> of this podcast is that we review religious movies, but this may be the least religious movie we've ever reviewed. <laughs> yeah. They avoid God like they dated him in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> They really, I don't know that they say it at all. I mean. No, no, no. no. It's, it's its all about tradition and yada, yada, yada. This movie definitely has sort of a secular view of its religiousness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So he's like, hey, where are the menorahs? And she goes, you know where the menorahs are, which makes that a really weird fucking question. <laughs> I was testing you, grandma. I was testing you. <laughs> The other thing is, though, menorahs are not something that you need to, like, it's not a Christmas tree. Like, you don't need a new one every right, year. Yeah, like, right. you buy one once. So what do you mean? I need another menorah. <laughs> you know where they are. You come in all the time. <laughs> For menorahs. Yes. And then she's like, you know, while he's going to pick out the menorah, Christy's like, well, do you, I don't suppose you've got any pictures of, uh, of Jonathan around that we could use to flesh out his backstory at all, do you? She's like, I sure do. <laughs> They're hanging up right here. Comic book style as Dota <laughs> set oh out the progression God. of his life. <laughs> and then we find out that his personality trait is that he likes to travel. Yep. Oh my God. It's the best. Cool. They actually took someone's Tinder profile seriously. Yes! Yes! <laughs> and he also likes the office. Oh, cool. You're a fully fleshed out human. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Oh, and I love this moment because he's got to like brag about how worldly he is. He's like, you know, I travel outside of the country every year. And it's like one of those things where it's like, I'm insanely wealthy and privileged, but pretend that other people don't do this because they're less worldly and, and enlightened than me because otherwise yep. I feel guilty about having so much when so many have so few. Yeah, you know, those single moms in Compton, they, they really should get to Europe one of these days. It's just yeah, laziness. Right. Exactly. They're just a Expand little... Expand yeah. your horizons. <laughs> then, of course, you have Christy, who is clearly wealthy and privileged, who's like, I've never seen one of these places before. Yes, I've never heard of this China of what you speak. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, okay. So now the grandma's like, you're teaching her about Jewishness all wrong. Start with the food. And I'm just going to say, if you ever want to teach somebody about Jewishness, unless you're trying to scare them off, do not start with the fucking food, okay? Yeah, <laughs> There's a reason why there are zero restaurants in the history of the universe that serve Jewish food to non-Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> Delis, excuse me, delis, we stole those. But to be fair, they yeah. are now considered Jewish. They're they're Jewish now. Yeah. yeah, well, you can't get a ham and cheese there. And bagels are not really Jewish. Again, stolen, okay. but ours like now. Thing, yeah. Ours okay, now. yeah, I mean, that's the point. They're like the West Bank of food. <laughs> <laughs> Her lack of knowledge of anything that is outside of Christmas, including travel, leads me to believe that she is, v similar to Mariah Carey, dead for the entire year and then reawakens on November 26th. Right. <laughs> and is only alive for about a month and a half of the year. Oh, God, this movie makes so much sense if she's like in that Jack Skellington Christmas world thing and she just fell out at some Ooh, point. They forgot they for cut sure. How else would she know nothing about anything except <laughs> Christmas? Yeah, yeah. All right, so then, so he's like, yeah, we should go have some Jewish food now so I can teach you about eating Jewishly. I already had lunch plans with my girlfriend, but I'm sure she won't mind if I bring another attractive female with me. Oh, women love it when you bring a strange woman who you're spending time with to lunch plans with them. <laughs> it's their favorite. So it is. It is our favorite thing. Yep. So this is Heather. Now, Heather will just basically show up to be, you know, the generically bad girlfriend to a even less fleshed but out. not even really. No, no. An aloof girlfriend, I guess, is the right way to go. Well, what's great is it's Hallmark or Lifetime or whoever the fuck made this. So they don't know how to villainize women because their audience is women and sleeping old women. <laughs> so she's just like, hey, yeah, I'm his girlfriend. I don't know. Am I, though? Yes, for now. But am I? <laughs> That's the entirety of her personality. <laughs> Well, right. So, so they have her like several times during this, like as he's explaining the the Hanukkah miracle and 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 uh, how delicious latkes and jelly donuts are. They have the girlfriend constantly going like, "Isn't Jewishness silly and arbitrary tradition?" <laughs> it's wild. And then our our character Christy is like, 
Isn't Hanukkah so random? Random? <laughs> you're you're choosing the word random. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And at one point, they're talking about the fact that this is the other thing that's so crazy to me. Because they're teaching each other about these holidays, they call each other teachers and students. Yeah. She's like, he's my teacher. And he's like, you're a great student and a teacher. And Christy at one point says, I'm a part-time student, part-time teacher, full-time hungry. And if my boyfriend brought somebody to lunch who said that, I would end the relationship. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And hey, to Heather's credit, she does. (laughs) That's true. No, you're right. (laughs) So, all right. So, but now he's got to, he's got to tell them the story of Hanukkah. And that's got to be so hard. To tell Christians, because you know your story sucks compared to their story for the holiday, right? Well, don't worry, Noah. He doesn't tell the Hanukkah story. He tells this fucking batshit insane version of it. Oh, this is not the story. No. Okay, I got to be honest. I heard this and literally was like, do I not know what Hanukkah's about? Like, I, <laughs> I very genuinely, until Eli just confirmed right now, I really was like, Wow, I just had no fucking idea what Hanukkah was about. <laughs> I I was so confused, I had to Wikipedia the story of Hanukkah. Because I was like, the Greeks? The Greeks? Why is there a ticking <laughs> clock on the Hanukkah story? But they just, they heard the Hanukkah story, which, by the way, is someone tried to kill the Jews. They failed. We lit a candle. It stayed on for longer than we thought it would. <laughs> Hooray! Yeah. Right, that's the Hanukkah story. And they were like, oh, shit, that's a sentence and a half. So he's like, all right, imagine this. The Maccabees, a tribe that had biblically been dead for several hundred years before the fucking Hanukkah story. (laughs) This would be like me being like, all right, you want to know the story of Vietnam? All right, it's World War I. And James Bond is the best American (laughs) soldier we have to offer. (laughs) It is so insane. But then the girlfriend leaves for a second and and he's freaking out. He's like, what if I'm bad at Christmas? And she's like, you'll be amazing, Jonathan. And he's like, what if I can't put ornaments on a tree? Yes. Yeah. And I, I love, yeah, Heather gets a call from the plot asking her to step away from the table for a second or something so that they can like sweat about like, oh, but but don't tell her you're telling me about Christmas. So I'm, I'm supposed to learn it through osmosis or whatever the fuck the plot of this dumb ass so movie is. so weird. Yeah. And I just have two very important points to make before we leave this scene. The first is they act like the sofa Tony guts or whatever those horrible donuts are, are either as good or taste anything like a jelly donut. No illusions. If I handed you a sofa Tony gut or whatever the fuck they're called. It's not that. And was like, try one. And what do you think it is? You would not guess jelly donut. You would guess poisoning attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Two, they bring over their latkes and they're not fucking latkes. No, nope. they're knishes. Yep. Okay. Like I said at the beginning, Best worst Jewish stuff written by non Jews. Oh, the amazing. entire movie they refer to balls of potato mush as lot. That's not a latka. Not Google a latka. latka. No. Oh my no. god. <laughs> Latkes are sh- shredded. Shredded. And there's gonna be some fucking asshole out there who's like, well, actually, my family's from you know North Carolina, Tennessee, and we, that's how our like. Fuck you. You get them wrong. You get them wrong. I'm a New York Jew. She's a Chicago Jew. You're not a real Jew. You're the fucking oh, dispara. We know what latkes are. You don't. <laughs> All right. So, her, so her alarm goes off uh, again. We get another morning in this dumbass movie, and this entire day exists only so her friend can come and tell her the terrible news. The rival toy company will also be at the Hanukkah party trying to know more Hanukkah than she does. What the fuck are we supposed to think is happening? This was so weird. No. I was like, that was the whole scene? Like, I, I rewound. I was like, did I miss half the scene? <laughs> so stupid. But she's like, they're going to come and show other toys. She didn't even have toys, though, no. at her pitch. Right. Are they okay at their job? Because then they're better than you. <laughs> yeah, and we should point out, at this point in the movie, 
She still has no toy idea. No? She owns a menorah, has eaten a potato square and a fucking <laughs> jelly donut, but she has no idea what toy she's going to pitch. I longed for this movie to make it all the way through. And she lights the menorah so good that he's like, the account is yours. Now tell me about the toy. And she's like, <laughs> which is kind of what happened. Yeah. I mean, spoiler alert. That is what happened. Yeah. Sorry, no, I was gonna but say. like the end there, we did it. We finished. Yeah, well, no, no, there's there's a lot of more interesting stuff to stick around for. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure that this movie thinks it just added stakes and I don't have the heart to tell it otherwise. So we're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back soon with even more mistletoe and menorahs. And so I said, you can have your EpiPen back after you apologize. No, that's fair. Hey, guys, you ready to record? Dude. Eli, what happened to your glasses? Oh, yeah. Long story. Uh, held on to the back of Cecil's car. Ended up getting dragged for a couple miles. I guess they did kind of get a little scratched up. Kind of. Dude, they look like fogged glass. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. But what am I going to do? Spend a fortune at the eye doctor? No, thanks. Why don't you try Warby Parker? Is, is that the name of your eye doctor? Because I, I don't really want a new guy. No, Eli, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Look, Rachel, if this is some kind of fashion thing. Yeah, I buy most of my clothes by paying a guy at Costco to leave the dumpster unlocked. Yeah. So I can't really break that cycle. Okay, I'm aware of that. That's why I hid those pants of yours. But Warby Parker glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. Sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses are also available. Yeah, but I don't know what kind of glasses I want. Well, you don't have to. Warby Parker has a quiz you can take right on their website, and then they'll send you pairs to try on at home, and you can keep what you like. Whoa, have you actually taken that quiz? I sure have. It's not just convenient. The styles look great, and I can do it all without leaving my apartment. All right, guys, I'm sold. How do I give it a try? Well, you can try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free for five days, and there's no obligation to buy. Your home try-on ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Again, you can try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash awful. As an end-of-the-year treat, you can save 15% when you purchase two or more pairs of Warby Parker prescription eyewear. That includes eyeglasses or sunglasses, but this is a limited-time offer that ends on December 31st of 2020, so act now. Wow. Thanks, guys. You hear that little line buddies that follow me everywhere? We're getting new glasses. Uh, Eli, those are pretty sure those are scratches. <laughs> OK, uh, Noah, if they're scratches, then how come they follow me whenever I turn my head? OK. Oh, boy. There they are. He's going to miss them. Dave, thanks so much for coming to the holiday party. Oh, no problem, Mr. Horsenblum. I, I think toys for kids can make a really good uh, line Dave, of Dave, please, let's not talk business right now. It's time to light the menorah. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. You do know how to light the menorah, don't you? Oh, uh, no. Uh, uh, no, sorry. I'm, I'm actually, I'm Presbyterian. Ooh, that's too bad. You see... Christy here knows all about the menorah, don't you, Christy? I sure do. Barooch, hot claw, fatter boy. Impressive. Well, looks like someone really wants this toy account. I, I'm sorry, are you implying that there was a religious test for this account? Because I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Whoa, Isn't come on now, Dave. Where's your competitive spirit? Uh, I, and not at the holiday party. I, I said the office, you know, where it's legal. Le uh, let me ask you this, Dave. Do you know what this is? Uh, uh, it's a dreidel. Ooh, well done, Christy. Latkes. Mm, and we are back to a tie. Seriously? Chanika guilt. And Christy's in the lead. Dave, can you take it back? Uh, oh, I... Uh pale, baldly behaved children, uh, controlling the media, uh, accusing anyone who points out the human rights violations in Israel of anti-Semitism. Uh, wow. Uh, Dave. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I just... No, 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 no. You, uh, you get the account. Dreidel? Damn it, Christy, you already did dreidel. Aw, oh, beans. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up with Christy showing up to Tinseltown late. 
they do the whole like, oh, you're on time, but n- I, you're usually the late one, except they've never met before this, except for that one time and no one was late for anything. I don't even know what this fucking scene was supposed to be referencing. I mean, they really managed to squeeze an entire conversation out of just, ah, I thought thought you were going to you were going to be I was late, not, but you were I weren't. was on time for being late. Yeah, yeah. This is such a wonderful insight, though, right? Like, what do normies talk about when they meet cute? I thought you were going to be late, but you weren't. Bazinga. That's, and then they get married and have kids. <laughs> oh, maybe you're right. Yeah. So they walk around this little pop-up Christmas fair thing, and he just keeps going like, so wait, there are bells and there are Christmas trees? I don't, hold on a second. I don't get <laughs> He literally was walking around just a pop up Christmas fair that happened everywhere all December yeah. long that anyone can go to. And he's like, what is this place? <laughs> These people sell Christmas. Yeah, I, I've always been afraid to walk in here that they would know that I wasn't one of them. Yeah. what? I, who the hell knows? Like there's a secret password or something <laughs> to get in. It's not like it's a church. Yeah. And she opens this by going, lesson one. And I wanted her so badly to be like, God rapes an 11-year-old. But no, it's, um, <laughs> it's wear red and green. <laughs> wear red and green. Yep. Oh, that was the other thing. Her wardrobe for the entire movie <laughs> is all different shirts in the same exact Christmas red color. Yep. And I was like, nobody has a holiday wardrobe for the entire <laughs> month right, of Christmas unless you're a virgin. <laughs> there is no way that this woman has ever had sexual intercourse. Mm-hmm. They certainly don't write her like she knows what that is. No, she only knows about Christmas. Yep. Exactly. And so and of course, they're supposed to be doing the whole flirty like them slowly realizing that they like each other thing. But these actors aren't really good enough to pull this off so they can either hate each other or really want to (laughs) fuck. Well, the other thing is like we're supposed to think during this whole movie that their like relationship is budding. But literally all they talk about is Christmas and Hanukkah. Like, do they know that the other one has other facets or do they both just celebrate these holidays all year and round? And re-enter their chrysalises until November. <laughs> no, no, he travels also. Oh, God, sorry, yeah. I forgot. Okay, and so now it's time for us to follow up on the fruitcake thing. This movie has a strong, no motherfuckers, fruitcake is delicious stand that it would like to take. This movie doesn't get political about much, but that's the one thing it wants to be known for. Yeah, he's like, oh my gosh, fruitcake is good. And I wrote in my notes, narrator voice, it was not, in fact, good. (laughs) (laughs) It didn't even look appetizing. I mean, it looked truly disgusting. And he was like... Wow, like truly blown away. It's like potato latkes, fuck the sufgani or whatever. The <laughs> fuck. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, right. Well, that, that's sort of the theme of the fucking movie is people eating terrible, bland food and going, oh my God, so oh good. All right. So, and then, and then he's like, oh, hey, did you, did you light your menorah last night? And she's like, I got so confused trying to light a fucking candle. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> totally. She literally was like, I screwed it up. And he was like, oh, well, I'll just video chat you tonight so you don't burn down your apartment. <laughs> it is true, though, that it is women weren't taught to light candles until like six or seven years ago. So I understand <laughs> some people are still catching up. That's so fucking stupid. All right. So now she's home. She's trying to make some lot because because apparently she thinks at this party they're going to ask her to make food. <laughs> All right, for your next task to join our toy company, whatever the fuck. <laughs> Not come making contest. Go. And again, the latkes she's making are potato knishes. Just- they look like Eli's pug in a pan. <laughs> but- <laughs> potato knishes that they have her frying in oil. Gosh, so gross. Honestly, between those potato knishes, all the jelly donuts and her Starbucks coffee order, I was really hoping this movie was going to end with her having diabetes. Oh, <laughs> will you still love me when I lose a foot? <laughs> but no, it's her boyfriend. And her boyfriend makes a great point. He's like, hey, did you nail down your pitch? And she's like, I made Jew pancakes and lit a candle. And he's like, cool. Cool, cool, cool. But then is a dick when she's like, oh, I want you to try one of these pancakes I'm making. And he's like, that's not a burger or a pizza (laughs) or a beer. 
I care. I'm not. It's just not my thing trying food. Yeah, he's like, no, I don't want to eat your Jew food. Let's order Chinese. <laughs> yeah. so the great. real Jew food. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, he's not wrong. So, okay, and then, and this is where he has to explain that he can't make it to pre Christmas Eve, Eve dinner with her family because he doesn't like them. Yeah, babe, babe, I'm sorry I'm going to miss pre-Christmas Eve Eve, but if it makes you feel better, I hate your family and the things you care about most in the world. It was insane. He was like, you guys have all those inside jokes and love for each other. I just don't belong. So, yeah, but so then they sit around eating Chinese food, talking about, you know, good toy ideas. Right. And he's like, here, I've got a great one for you, babe. Action figures, but they're stockbrokers. Yep. The end. That's the end That's of my idea. That's the whole idea. idea. This movie's going to run with that for a very long time, guys. So long. Until 14 seconds before the credits. Yeah, it turns out that these God. screenwriters are as good at coming up with toys as they are at writing screenplays. Yeah. <laughs> but she kicks him out because he's not going to make Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve dinner. And that's exactly then uh, Jonathan calls about the menorah lighting FaceTime that they had planned. Yeah, he's going to walk her through it because... She needs multiple practice sections. He says, you know, okay, do it just like we practiced. It's just like, really? Do it. it is just lighting. I'm not forgetting like a like a quintessential part, right? Like it is just lighting oh, the candles lighting. with the other candles. That's can it. The That's end. it. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I, I mean, you go, don't you go left to right or so? I don't. Yeah. But, but like, yeah, it's <laughs> right to left. Okay. Yeah. But it's certainly not like something that you need. Multi, you don't need a Rocky montage to get this <laughs> shit. And you can also just Google it. Yes. Look out which way. Exactly. Oh, and this actress's Hebrew is giving me deep, deep flashbacks to all the bot mitzvahs I worked. I think Eli and I both had simultaneous PTSD to our bot mitzvahs. <laughs> just watching her be like, Burrick. Burrick. Addo. I don't know. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so we get to the end of this, and, she, and she's like, hey, look, I know tomorrow is Saturday, but we've got nothing else going on in this movie, so do you want to meet me for more Christmas lessons? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I mean, we're not at 90 minutes yet, so yes, yeah, yes. Exactly. So, okay, so again, the, the, we get the alarm. She wakes up to her advent calendar and her morning breath chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, I didn't tell you guys this, but I actually started a drinking game where I took a shot every time that this movie started with the scene of her waking up to her alarm, and um, I'm dead. This yeah, is no, this is I, I, alcohol. Say, I died of alcohol dead. poisoning. Just... Uh, <laughs> this is the ghost of me speaking. What's funny is that this movie is supposed to, like, you know, it's, it, it takes eight days to get through. They make a big deal of that, so we have to see every one of those days she wakes up, even though they don't really have eight days worth of shit to nope. do. <laughs> they, no, they sure do not. Do not. <laughs> And also, by the way, so she wakes up and that instant, the second she wakes up, she gets a text. And I'm like, how can no one involved in this production know how waking up works? How is that even possible? <laughs> by the way, if somebody texts you before your wake up time at 6 a.m., there was a death in the family. No, if you're <laughs> texting before that for any other reason, I'm cutting you out of my life. Yes, you're absolutely. Hitler. Absolutely. You're Hitler or you have a baby and you have no concept of time anymore. <laughs> well, that's, that's true. Yeah. true. Oh, I, I, did give, I did give Eli like three, four months uh, leeway on this one. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is that is fair. All right. So she goes to that little pop up Christmas fair thing. And wouldn't you know it? This is so stupid and bizarre. So so weird. Jonathan has a booth there to sell fruitcake to raise money for his middle school class in Manhattan. What? I, I don't know. And he was like, well, you know, it seems like people are really desperate for good fruitcake. So I thought I'd sell. No one's desperate for good fruitcake. That that's not a, you made that up. Also, you, you made got, that up. You got your fruitcake from this pop up fair. Right. Yeah, so like, wait, are you it. buying it from there and moving it to a different booth? How are you? He's pyramid scheming the fruitcake. <laughs> also, how did you arrange to have a like? You have to pay for these things. Those you can't just shut up a fucking thousands table. Thousands of fucking dollars. This, this is they're in Manhattan. You have to like book that three years in advance. That's so insane. <laughs> So weird. The movie of how he got this fruitcake stand is so much more interesting than the rest of this movie. 
<laughs> yeah, like isn't every and it's in New York. Isn't yes. every small business clamoring to go sell fucking ornaments at this fair? Oh fuck yes, Jesus Christ. So yeah, but you see this this Christmas fair thing is actually a Hanukkah lesson because Hanukkah is about doing good things for people like selling fruit cakes to them. I it's guess. also not what Hanukkah's about. <laughs> not what Hanukkah's about. Why did they make up shit for Hanukkah? They like, made up so much Hanukkah shit. There, there's none of this. None of this is real. None of this is real. Well, no. And here's what's crazy. They make up so much shit for Hanukkah and never get around to a dreidel. <laughs> no. Seriously, the one Hanukkah game, the <laughs> one Hanukkah activity, which is to play with a fucking wooden toy. And they were just like, it's actually about doing good deeds for the homeless. That's, yeah, uh, what? That's, that's what Hanukkah's about. Also, wrapping presents, right? Wrapping presents is a big part of Hanukkah, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. When he was like, oh, tonight I got to wrap some gifts. And she was like, do you know how to wrap properly, though? I'm a wrapping pro. And then I was like, oh, she is definitely a virgin. Okay. I was on the right track. <laughs> hey, I'm a wrapping pro. Yeah, she's she's going to show him how to properly wrap presents. And I wrote in my notes at 4 a.m. the night before Christmas. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. I feel like the closest that I could get to hell in the mortal plane would be watching Eli wrap a fucking present. I just I don't know this for a <laughs> fact, but I'm so goddamn precise. My my presents are all origami and pretty. My wife oh, wow. intentionally goes out and buys like weird shape shit going like, bet you can't rip that shit. And I always do. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking rapping pro and I am not a virgin. I've had sex with women before. And by contrast, the first year my wife asked me to wrap the presents, I used an entire roll of wrapping paper on the first gift she handed me oh my and God. then literally wrapped the ball of wrapping paper I had formed around the book with duct tape and handed it to her <laughs> with a completely straight face. So I've only been spending Christmas with Eli for the amount of time that Amazon has the option where they'll send the item in a in gift bag. bag. <laughs> so Eli's house is just full of those Amazon gift bags because he never needs to wrap a gift. Yeah, and every right. gift comes from Amazon. Bag for every size. All right. So they're but they're heading off to wrap some gifts. So they giggle their way into her apartment. And oh, he has to brag about how in Hanukkah you get eight nights worth of gifts, but they're mostly shitty. <laughs> right? Like, I love I've gotten like, a lot of socks. Right. Like no Jew can get through this Hanukkah description without admitting. But yeah, but it's not good. Not in a good way. <laughs> we yeah. only get presents so that the non-Christian kids at school didn't feel bad. Yep, exactly. Right. They also have a talk about how getting presents isn't about what you spend. It's about listening no illusion. It's about listening, listening and it's about how you rap. Yeah. She said if you if you, you care, that. then you would rap better. And I was like, wow, Eli has not cared about a single person <laughs> ever <laughs> in well, his entire life. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. Like she he pulls out this one box and it's got one of those open faced box of dinosaurs. It's got an open face. And I'm like, oh, well, you should probably have some poster board to fold over that so that somebody who puts their thumb on it doesn't go right. Th oh, I'm sorry, Monet of wrapping. Nothing. You're just gonna put wrapping paper on that. Okay. <laughs> All right, yep. you know nothing. And by the way, she comes out with literally an entire toolbox full of a wrapping paper kit. And I just wrote, she seems lonely. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, at the very bottom of that, if she makes it through all the wrapping paper, a noose. <laughs> God. Every Christmas, she gets a little bit closer. <laughs> Bud Dwyer. All right, so now she has to tell him that she has to come up with toys and all she's got is stockbroker action figures. What a terrible idea, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have a long conversation about how the two of them want kids, but their significant others don't want kids. What was wild to me, though, was that he was like, does your boyfriend want kids? And she was like, I don't really know, I guess. And like, based on everything in this movie, they appear to have only been dating for about four three months because she is just blown away by all of his, her boyfriend's character traits. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, she is surprised by everything about him. Well, because she just fell out of Christmas land and doesn't know how boyfriends work. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So, oh, but then she gets a call. It's an emergency. She's got to go to work in the middle of the night at the toy design company where they don't design <laughs> toys. It's an emergency toy development meeting. <laughs> Look, Noah and I have both worked 
at toy companies and we've both had emergency situations. As have I. I mean, Rachel, as the person who was technically your boss during that time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't like work, but like I was an employee. <laughs> you were in the building and I signed a check with your name on it. There you you sure did, buddy. I sold like one or two toys in the three years I worked for you. Oh, you it go. was insane. But I was so bad at it. Here's the thing. When you get called in for an emergency toy meeting, it is not because they want to work on your congressman or stockbroker action figures. It's because one of your employees was caught doing a heroin in the break room. <laughs> <laughs> or, no, Eli, don't talk about our friends or, like that. Or it's because everything that was just shipped over from China is deadly poisonous and we have to get it out of the stores it's quietly. On fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be fair, I think at the companies we worked at, they were like, everything's poisonous, so just make sure to not mention that when you're selling it to the parents. <laughs> make it sound like, you know, like make it sound good. Like, call it spicy. Say it's spicy. Yeah. And if they ask you if it's poisonous, just say you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that kid died before the lawsuit ended. That product is officially not poisonous. He doesn't even have standing. That's right. No standing. <laughs> Whiny little bitch should have held out longer. Oh, We're all going Christ. to hell. <laughs> yep. It's not an edible toy. It's his own fault. I don't want to get into it. I've rationalized. <laughs> All right, but so now what we learn here is that her idea, the best thing that she came up with was congressman action figure, right? Like, it's just like stockbroker action figures, but it's also partisan, so it's even better. (laughs) And it'll come with an educational comic book about economics because who doesn't love educational comic books about economics? Okay, to be fair, though, like, I made it all the way through college, and I still don't know how to do my taxes, so I think this would have been a great toy to have. (laughs) But you know who would have helped you learn that? A fucking AOC action figure. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Yeah, oh, so, so she presents the idea. The boss loves it. No idea why. And then we have to see sneaky drag makeup guy literally like hiding behind a potted plant so he can take photographs surreptitiously of her plans so he can sell it to the other evil toy company. Yeah. He's going to make an Elon Omar action figure one out of a hundred times when you pull the string, it says something really problematic about Jews, but otherwise it's really popular. People love that one. Yeah, all right. So he takes off his Bush costume and leaves the fucking thing. And then she calls her boyfriends. He needs to talk to her about something about their future. But he but he won't tell her right now. And let me tell you something. If anybody ever comes to me and is like, I have to talk to you about something, but not right now, I, you're dead. You're dead or I'm throwing up because there's no... Yeah, don't. You can't do that. No, fuck you. You can't, no. Yeah, exactly. That's always breaking up or proposing, but I want to make a proposition today. We should start doing that for normal shit so that that conversation can start being a surprise again. <laughs> right? I'm ta- if you're listening to this podcast, I want you to go out and be like, hey, we need to have a conversation in person. I don't want to talk now. And then be like, so trash days are Thursdays, huh? They moved it. Because <laughs> of the winter. So keep them on their toes. All right. So, yeah, so she she grabs her menorah and calls Jonathan so that he can walk her through that complex lighting a match process once again. Still doesn't have it. Two nights nope. down. Still doesn't get it. <laughs> no. Nope. And she goes, hey, I know tomorrow's Sunday, but we, do, you know, do you have time to get together for another lesson? He's like, wow, still not another plot point in sight, huh? She's like, no, <laughs> not a fucking one. This is it. So and because apparently this movie doesn't trust us to understand what's going on if these two people just meet for an unscheduled next lesson. <laughs> right. Also, is this I, I couldn't really get a good gauge on was this were they meeting every single day and this entire movie is just over the course of a week? Yes. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. They meet so every sad. day for like eight fucking days every day of Hanukkah. Just neither of them had any other plans ahead of time for eight <laughs> straight fucking days. Like, Both of them had time to meet up with a stranger to talk about something Googleable. Yep. The entire yep. fucking time. Yeah. And all the weirder because it's over Hanukkah and he's Jewish. We never hear from his family in any way through this. Okay. Nope. All right. But now it's time for them to go to a Christmas tree farm together. And of course, he doesn't know Christmas very good. So he picked a shitty small tree. Ah, crazy. Okay. She 
brought her own cartoon axe to this Christmas tree car. <laughs> Not did, the kind that you cut a Christmas tree down with, by the way. Like a, a hatchet style axe. Yeah, right. No, she would have to lay down and scooch under. Yeah, it would be a By the way, like I don't I don't really think you're supposed to do that. Like, isn't there a guy there to cut the fucking tree for you? I'm pretty sure there's a guy there who cuts the fucking like, tree for you. They weren't out in a forest. They were at a business that sells Christmas trees. So they'll let you saw down your own tree if you want. But yeah, yeah, you don't bring your own fucking axe. Or nope. is it just show up with a big fucking axe slung over their shoulder? But like, she's the queen of Christmas, so right. of course she yes. has one. She has her special Christmas tree cutting axe. Okay. This is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> so we do we do a quick time cut to them decorating the tree. And we cut in at the end of a story that he's telling because this movie doesn't have the ability to create an interesting story. So they just, you know, he's just like, and the moral of the story is Moroccan teenagers will fucking cut you, right? Fucking <laughs> it's a, it's you. a very weird ending. He's like, anyways, the balloon came out eventually, but I never did get <laughs> off that heroin habit I have. <laughs> so, but yeah, but okay. Now it's time to light the menorah. And I just want to say, it's weird to participate in another religion, right? Yes. Like, yeah. Participating in Hanukkah and participating in Christmas are wildly different things. One is mostly based on Coke commercials and Saturnalia. The other is very clearly another person's religion. <laughs> yes. She's saying a fucking prayer, right? The whole goddamn time. That candle lighting prayer is a fucking prayer. If I got invited to my boss's house and they were like, will you baptize my son? I'd be like, no, no, I won't. And again, I just want to be so clear. This is not her party. No, she was just no. invited the other day to somebody else's party and is like, they're probably going to have me light the candles, make latkes. I better learn how to do. <laughs> so. Yeah, all right. So Peter, her her boyfriend, the bad boyfriend, shows up at Jonathan, the love interest's house, to pick her up. And they have to have, like, she has to go freshen up, so they have to have this, like, conversation where the two of them meet, and Jonathan can tell right away that he's not the right man for her. It's this was my so, favorite part. This is my favorite part. It's so good, because, again, like, they can't make the boyfriend bad enough that, like, it ruins Gam Gam's nap time movie but they can't make him good enough that we realize she's emotionally cheating on him. So he's like, don't worry, I got her a job at the bank, the bank of money. <laughs> right, and Jonathan's just like, oh, I didn't know she was looking for a new job. And he was like, she's not, but money, what do you do? You're a teacher, fucking cuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I could never be a teacher unless I was allowed to teach money. Am I right? High five. I'm going to watch basketball on this Christmas tree. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, but I thought her dream was to make toys. He's like, yeah, come on, man. If her dream was to make toys, she'd have at least some idea of a toy she could make somewhere in her fucking head. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> she's she really is not good at her job. Like, she I, should be a banker. I'm just saying, I don't mean to keep agreeing with the asshole boyfriend, but she should kind of be a banker. <laughs> she's not only is she not good at her job, she's not aware of what a toy is. Not at all. Oh, <laughs> so so then he leaves to go get the car or whatever. And now we have a, a moment alone between Jonathan and Christy where he explains that he can see that he's not the right man for her. But he's he's got to do it in fumbly romantic comedy ease. And I fucking love romantic comedy ease. It's this part right before act three where they need to get in a fight so they can come back together mm -hmm. again. And he's like, well, you understand he's, he is the, not a noun. A noun would make this too clear, but he's a, <laughs> not an adjective because an adjective would explain what I mean. I'm just saying you're, you're fat. And she's like, wow, I'm madder about this than I should be because otherwise there's no tension for act three. Right. And then she's like, well, your girlfriend does doesn't, doesn't want to have kids. That's all I Yeah, can. right. Yes, exactly. So they have this fucking stilted ass fight where like he just refuses to actually say what he's talking about the whole fucking time because it's a rom-com. And then Christy and Peter go to some fucking place Eli would drag me to. <laughs> <laughs> 
and boyfriend finally gets a characteristic that we can all agree is hateable. Uh, he's on a keto diet, the yes. only diet more annoying than veganism. I really, <laughs> I wrote down maybe his keto diet is why he can't grow any hair on his face. <laughs> I just I wrote my notes like, oh, wow, this movie and I finally intersect on hating people. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I got you something. And he reaches into his inside pocket and she's expecting a ring. And he says, it's a job application. And like in any better movie, that would be a great moment. Right. <laughs> but this movie's so bad that it's just like she goes, oh, it's it's paperwork. And he goes, it is work that is papers because we're humans and we're talking. <laughs> the entire point of this scene is just him being like, I got you a job you don't want. Yep. Right. I, I, I had to make sure that I did something break upable withable before act three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to really lock in that he's a not likable character, he snaps at a waiter to order champagne. <laughs> okay. So at that point, I'm like, okay, now I want him to die in a I pissed off RoboCop kind of way. Okay. I'm, we're, I'm in. And this also just really solidified the idea that like they really must have just met each other because they have these huge fundamental differences. Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean money's what's the most important thing to you? I'm like, haven't they been dating for a while? Like... How do you, you not know that? This is, this is beautiful insight into Hallmark culture. The people who watch these movies have four conversations, get married, and then never speak to each other again. <laughs> How do you that, think they keep finding out that they're accidentally gay? It's because this oh, is the basis for their romantic you're right. life. That wow. makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We need to brainstorm good ways to kill off this character in our fan fix. So we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Christy be able to memorize 14 Hebrew words with an entire week of practice? Does she think they're going to ask her to cook goddamn latkes? How bad would you have to fuck up Hanukkah party before you lost a client over it? Find out the answers to these questions, and that's pretty much it when we return for the exceptionally predictable conclusion of Mistletoe and Menorahs. Hi, I'm Rachel Wax, attractive female here to tell you about taking care of your balls. Taking care of our balls? That's right, your balls. While society hasn't quite caught up to the 84-stage shaving, waxing, and moisturizing routine required of women, thanks to Manscaped, you can do something about the thicket of horror surrounding your balls. I, still, I wouldn't say thicket of horror. If you're not using Manscaped, it probably is. But don't worry. Manscaped is here to give you a fresh start in 2021 with their perfect package 3.0 that has all the right tools for the job. Like the Lawnmower 3.0. This waterproof and skin safe trimmer will reduce nicks to your two best friends. Or the Crop Preserver, an anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. That's right. And Manscaped even threw in their shed travel bag to keep all your goodies stored comfortably. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code AWFUL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code AWFUL. Happy New Year's to your balls. Hi, I'm Tony D. Are you making a lifetime, hallmark, or otherwise forgettable movie? Then come on down to Tony D's house of movie bad boyfriends. Our boyfriends are guaranteed to be bad in a way that isn't too dark for your quickly churned out romantic comedy, but they will be bad enough that your audience will forgive your heroine for cheating on them. We've got two busy at work boyfriends. Babe, I I'd love to be at your Zither concert, but, you know, I got a big meeting for the Grubner account. We've got sports watching boyfriends. Sports? Not sure why that's a bad thing, but movies seem to think it is. And of course, there's interested in other women in a way that implies maybe he's cheating on the protagonist boyfriends. Wow, check out that waitress's ass. You just, you know I would cheat on my girlfriend, right? Act now, and we'll throw in a wacky best friend absolutely free. Girl, that sounds hard. You should dump his ass. Tony D's house of movie bad boyfriends. Because when it comes to romantic comedies, monogamy is always the villain. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit and once again we're going to open up on the advent calendar this time it's monday the party is on thursday and this is the day where she's supposed to be done with her prototype but she's not oh no i don't even know what her job is anymore <laughs> right? is, she, is she actually just like a marketing person what has she been? Because we have to assume she's been at work for like eight hours a day on these weekdays, right? What the 
fuck has she done? <laughs> and I want to point out a very specific interstitial shot that happens in this scene. For, and I cannot emphasize this enough, no reason we see feet dancing on a toy piano. And then it cuts back to the rest of the scene, which has nothing to do with that toy piano. <laughs> I think it oh, is somebody because... Lost, somebody lost a bet. I think it's because someone was like, what's that toy movie? You mean big? Yeah, where they dance on the big <laughs> piano. People loved that. Yep. Movies about toys have a toy piano in them. That's it. That tracks. Yep. With the rest of the film. Oh, uh, she shows up and her friend is like, do you have your prototype and she pulls out one of those you know those little wooden dummies that artists pose and shit she pulls out one of those and shrugs and her friend is like yep that sure isn't a toy and she's like no i don't know why i'd even carry it around it makes no sense it's literally people- for figure drawing i don't even know yes. why she has it right <laughs> In case people couldn't understand the concept of doll without a visual <laughs> aid, I guess. You know, I like know. a guy, but smaller. I've lost you. I understand. <laughs> it would have been it would have been more representative if she had bought an existing toy and like adjusted it somehow. Well, right. No, because that's what you do. You buy a bunch of toys that already exist and start sawing shit off of them. Yeah, right. No, that would have made perfect sense. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So then we cut to that night because apparently this movie cannot be bothered to deal with coming up with something to happen on Monday. <laughs> so, no. But everything's going wrong. She she fried potatoes poorly and she just can't menorah right. She needs a Christmas miracle. Oh, uh, right. And so she texts a picture of them to Jew main character guy. And I, I wrote in my notes, no better way to make up than to text a boy a picture of your latkes. Um, I would just like to point out something very telling here. I'm looking at all three of our notes and they're very different. My first note says, those don't look remotely like latkes. Eli says, making not latkes. And Noah says, her, her fried, fried potatoes, potatoes are, are looking, looking pretty, pretty solid. solid. <laughs> I mean, for, for fried potatoes, right? <laughs> this look pretty good. They look crispy. And golden, You're fucking goy. Like, uh, it's like a, more like hash browns than latkes. Fine, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but now suddenly it's Tuesday because this movie couldn't come up with a new thing for every fucking day. <laughs> and now she's so determined that she's heading out for work by six twenty-five a.m. Ooh, in case ah, I didn't hate this person crazy. enough already. <laughs> so. Yep. This is also where she FaceTimes her dad in the middle of the office. Yep. I really wanted someone to walk in and be like, stop making FaceTime calls at the office, Christy. Everyone else works here, too. <laughs> I hate you. She didn't even have headphones in. She's probably the kind of person who also microwaves fish in the company kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but she's got to explain to dad that Peter can't make it for pre-Christmas Eve Eve dinner. And dad sure is paternal. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, sweetie, how are things? And she goes, things are tough. But she says it while she's like kind of smiling. Like she had a little too much Botox before this movie was done. So she can't really frown. So she's just like, grr, things are tough. (laughs) She might as well be like, things are tough. I mean, you know, white person tough. Not, not like yeah. actually <laughs> right, right. tough, but they're not putting black stories on Hallmark or Lifetime or whatever the fuck yeah. this is. So, you know, yeah. as hard as the people who will watch this movie ever want things to be in their films, how yeah. things are. Right. And da- OK, so she goes for coffee and damn it, if Heather, that's Jonathan's girlfriend, keep up. I was so proud of myself for remembering her name. Isn't right behind her in line because, you know, it's Manhattan. Yep. And everyone goes to the same <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> How many Starbucks could there possibly be in Manhattan? <laughs> They're far and few between. Sometimes there's a whole block between Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, you can't forget the reason she's going to get coffee is because her dad's response to things are tough is, why don't you get some coffee? And she's like, that's a great idea, dad. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What? Well, because we have screenwriters that don't know what a great idea would sound like. So they're like, he's like, well, you know, the next scene is in the coffee shop. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And so we haven't mentioned this up to this point, but up until now, she goes in with her crappy Eli order and and the barista was the only barista in New York. The one that works the coffee shop near her home and her work, apparently. 
is yeah. always fucks up her order and puts whipped cream in it. But this time she gets the order right because life is looking up. It's the third act, damn it. <laughs> yeah, and then she like confronts the barista about the whipped cream. She's like, you know, you've gotten the whipped cream wrong the last two times I ordered. I kind of thought you were doing it on purpose as though a Starbucks barista could hate somebody so much that they would intentionally get their order wrong. <laughs> also, please not do not forget about my favorite part of this scene. If, if we want to use the word scene, I feel like we're playing it fast and loose with that. But <laughs> when Heather comes up to her, she goes, oh, you're Hanukkah girl, which felt super anti-Semitic. I mean, yeah. if, anybody, if anybody called me a Hanukkah girl, I would feel pretty unsafe. I would laugh, yeah. but I would feel unsafe. Yeah, that's a hate crime in a lot of states. <laughs> so. Yeah, but so but the barista says, no, it's OK. I wasn't actually peeing in your coffee. It's OK to make a really crappy, weird order that annoys the shit out of your barista. Oh, my notes here are so gloaty. It's just like, that's right, movie. It's not annoying at all. <laughs> my baristas love me. That's why they hold their breath and immediately take their lunch break when I walk into a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, the barista looks at her with eyes full of knowledge and says, there's nothing wrong with getting things how you like them. Right. And the barista's not trying to fuck her or the barista is trying to fuck her and it just didn't work because yeah, Christmas it accidentally lady synced up with this movie. Yeah. The Christmas <laughs> virgin didn't know how that worked. Yeah. Right. But so armed with that barista wisdom, she goes to Jonathan's granny at Little Mitzvah's R Us. <laughs> And, and and asks if there's some kind of Jewish apology muffin that she could get. When she, when she asked that, Anna, who was sitting next to me watching this, said, what are Jews like? Money? Should I wrap up some money and <laughs> oh, give God. some money? <laughs> First of all, yes. That's why most bat mitzvah gifts are literally cash. Oh, Jesus Christ. True story. And also, I just want to point out, if every if you are apologizing this frequently and each apology has to come with a gift, your relationship is abusive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so here's the other thing about how sloppy this stupid fucking movie is. You don't you have her show up at his house with a fucking muffin. You've already established that yeah, muffins what? equal apology. You've already created this symbolism. Why wouldn't you pull the goddamn trigger on it? But no, instead, she goes and gets him a special Jewish present. They literally wrote in an opportunity for a cute callback and we're like, no, let's, let's nah. do something lazier than that. Right. Look, it's a blue star. Blue is the Jew color. Yes, exactly. But it's on your tree, so it's like it's both. <laughs> oh, cool. I wish she had gotten him what Eli has on top of his Christmas tree, which is a flying spaghetti monster. Yeah, there you go. True story. So, yeah, so she gets to his door and she's like, and she, and both at the same time, they're like, sorry. And I wanted him to go jinx and punch her in the shoulder or something. <laughs> like, been awesome. But no, she gives him his Jewish tree topper star and he's like, oh, wow, it's just like the one I had as a boy. I'm like, wait, you had a Christmas tree as a boy? I was really confused about that. <laughs> what the? Yeah, wait, what, what the fuck? Hold on a second. Why? You've just been wanting to flirt with this girl, you asshole. Hold on a second. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, this whole time he's been like, sorry, is it pronounced Christ mice? What? How yeah, do you right. So she's like, I learned today that I shouldn't hide what I want from anyone. I want your dick. Was, he didn't say that, though, but it, that would have been like, that's how that this movie should have gone like yeah and then he's like oh here have a jelly donut because apparently whoever wrote this movie thinks that jelly donuts are like the absolute center of hanukkah and that for eight <laughs> days straight jews eat nothing but jelly donuts <laughs> always have one hand i haven't had a jelly donut in years they're not that big of a deal he's got one in a fucking holster yeah, yeah exactly. the only reason to eat a jelly donut is that you're a sloppy guard in a kid's movie <laughs> 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 and someone's about to sneak by you. <laughs> Meanwhile, in this movie, everyone's pockets are just stuffed with them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. She pulls one out of her handbag. All right. So now it's it's the day of pre-Christmas Eve Eve. We haven't mentioned this yet. Okay, so it's morning and we're looking at the advent calendar again. She has a little tag tied around the December 23rd one that says pre-Christmas Eve Eve in case she forgets when the day before the day before Christmas is this year, in case the fucking mayor of Christmas Town forgets when the day before the day before what fucking day the 23rd falls on this month. 
I mean, to be fair, this girl did need four lessons in candle lighting. I can That's okay. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Noah, let me ask you this as the uh, as the token Christian on this podcast. Do advent calendars have a little note? On, like, is it also a real calendar? Like, do you all of a sudden write your agenda for each day? Because she really has a tag for every day that's like laundry day. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Presentation <laughs> due. Big party. Yeah, right. No, no, that's only for movie purposes. Got uh, it. Well, I mean, honestly, the, the, the most experience I have with an advent calendar in my life is that one time Eli got me eight different types of weed right before Christmas. Oh, that's so sweet. My roommate just got me um, a bottle of wine for each day before Christmas. All right. So you and I are are tied now for advent calendar experience. So maybe you (laughs) do. I don't know. All right. So so we okay. we cut to Jonathan now and he's all forlorn and dumped looking. Oh, Oh, no. Apparently, Heather came to him and said, yeah, you know, I met I saw somebody at a line in a Starbucks and decided I didn't love you anymore. Right. (laughs) It was so weird. Like. He was just like, yeah, she decided it was too early for me to meet her father and too early to be in a relationship. Yeah. Apparently she told him, if my dad likes you, it will be hard to break up with you. And I wrote in my notes, the Rachel Wax story. <laughs> oh, my God. That is it is the story of my life. That's why I never introduced my friends to my parents. Yeah, there you go. Also, I never want them to see that they look similar to my dad because it just makes them uncomfortable. Yeah, no, I get it. All right. So, yeah. So they broke up because there were only 22 minutes left in the movies, including credits. Right. So Mm -hmm. they didn't have time to give her a personality or anything. So they broke up and she's like, well, good. Now that you're dumped, you can go meet my family and do a Christmas Eve Eve thing. Because, you know, when you get out of a long term relationship, the best thing to do is to go around other people who love each other and don't know you. (laughs) That was so insane. She was like, what were you going to do? Mope tonight? And it's like right after getting broken up. Yes. 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 Of oh, fucking course. I, I, I think you're allowed to that day. <laughs> well, what's great is she's like, well, I have an amazing idea. And he's like, pity sex. And she's like, come see my parents. And he's like, yep, come see your parents. That's what I said. Come see your parents. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So they go to her family's thing. Dad comes out and he's all gravelly voiced. You know, he's gravelly just, voiced and 35. Yeah. He says, <laughs> I hope you like eggnog and Rachel just Whooshed, right? I really so, did. And he goes, well, I've never had it. And he's, he's like, well, have you ever sucked off an elf and swallowed? Because pretty much <laughs> it's uh, you don't know that there's no real difference. <laughs> oh, eggnog is so gross. It's really fucking bad. It's you know really what I bad. like? Milk and booze. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I said that and realized that my boyfriend the other day actually drank milk and then booze. So maybe, oh, well, you know, hey, huh. to each their own, I guess. All right, so they head inside, and this is when we learn that her dad and mom also travel a lot, just like Jonathan. Oh. They, I guess they, they bond over the mutual occupancy of a shared socioeconomic status. And there's this excellent <laughs> moment, because, again, the people who write Hallmark movies had to write a let's bond over our love of travel line for the mom, and the mom's <laughs> like, sure was hot in the Amazon jungle. And the whole movie <laughs> grinds to a halt where they're like... You're so fucking stupid, Sharon. You're just so fucking stupid. But also, let's not forget the way they started this conversation off was by him pointing to what is very clearly a stock image of a random couple on a beach TM. And he goes, hey, is that the Dead Sea? Yeah, right. Is the Dead Sea. I would recognize those waves anywhere. They couldn't even fake travel photos to put in frames for this. Like They didn't have a prop designer, so they just typed in beach and printed it out and put it in a fucking frame. And they did that for every destination on the wall. They were like, that's the Taj Mahal. Yeah, oh, God, it's so fun. Okay, so then we we lazily cut to the after dinner thing with him going, boy, that sure was good food we all just ate. <laughs> boy, that was delicious food we couldn't afford to do crafty with. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they all ask him, they're asking them these, I guess this movie thinks uh, are perfectly normal and rational Jew questions. You know, do y'all have special Jew pies? Is there a Jew pie? (laughs) And then yet again, we're talking about the fucking jelly donuts, which are apparently an enigma if you're not a Jew. And the parents are like, oh, we had some in Israel. Really? Or did you go to Penn Station? Because there's a Krispy Kreme right there that has them. You didn't have to like go to Israel. Like, it's fine. 
Oh, but then and then just then the carolers show up, right? Oh, I want to talk about Black Caroler. Oh, she was so sad. <laughs> This group of carolers are obviously all psyched, except for one African-American who is not psyched to be dressed old timey. <laughs> to be fair, she was also the only person of color in this film. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. Right? I think you're right. Look, I get it. African-American people don't want to dress like they're from the 1850s. Me and Rachel don't want to dress in stripy pajamas. They're tricking <laughs> your lips. I get it. They're not great outfits for us. No. Wow. No. All right. So, yeah. So, they the... Carolers come up and they sing and everybody's like, oh, that was great. And then Jonathan goes up to him and he's like, hey, do you guys know this one Hanukkah song? And they're like, yes, we do know that one Hanukkah song. And then they sing it. Oh. Well, and he leads the song. And I so wanted them to go like, dude, we are the fucking carolers. OK, you're J Jimmy Stewart. You ain't OK. You, have <laughs> you stand on that side and we'll stand on this side, asshole. But it was so weird because then Christy was like, where did that come from? And he was like. Jews have music too. It's yeah, bad, <laughs> but we do have it. Really? You guys have your own songs and everything, huh? I didn't even know Jews could read. <laughs> so, also, okay, so, and then the, the, he goes to leave and they, he has a bunch of presents, but they didn't know that he was coming. How does he have presents in their house? Did they just take shit from the kids? Oh, for sure. Or they had extra white elephant gifts, which means somebody got stuck with a generic Christmas mug. Oh, you know what? That's exactly it. My wife does that. Never mind. That's right. right? You got to have extra bonus shit, presents. but it's, yeah. the, it's like a so socks. Right? Yeah, socks. no, it's the, it's the mug. It's the fucking bonus mug. You're right. Yep. Yep. Wow. Oh, uh, but how awesome would it have been? Because this is just like everybody's, just, you know, they walk away and go like, oh, your family's pretty great. But how awesome would it have been if this movie had suddenly just in the middle of all of this bullshit had an actual family dinner? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, like, like three of them are fighting about politics the whole time. Somebody calls somebody a whore and one of them drinks too much and pisses herself and nobody has the heart to tell her. That could have been so good. But no, it's this bullshit Hallmark family. And everyone's happy all the time. Yep. And now he knows all about Christmas, which doesn't matter because he got dumped. <laughs> so <laughs> right now, and, and he's now he's stuck with this dumb fucking Christmas tree that he bought, yep. which I'm pretty sure they're pretty expensive if you're getting a giant one like that. Yeah, no, if you're getting a live tree and a big one, and it's a huge pain in the ass to throw it away, and it's a huge pain in the ass to clean up after it's out of your home, and there's sap on everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's lovely. Yeah. All right. So now we start the, another goddamn day with another fucking alarm. But don't worry. It's the day of the party. This is the last fucking day of the movie. Mm hmm. And she wakes up this day ready to tackle the morning. So excited. Here's the day of the party that I'm throwing, but it's not my party. So this movie doesn't make any sense. Yeah. OK. And so one of the plot lines that we sort of left off on this is her friend at work. She's been trying to get her friend to apply for this other job and where she'd make more money. And her friend keeps saying, no, I don't think I'd be very good at that. I'm not really comfortable with that job. But damn it, if she doesn't force her friend into taking that job anyway, which is exactly the thing they had the boyfriend do to establish that he's an asshole. But when she does it, it's because she's such a good friend. <laughs> this was really weird and kind of came out of left field and added truly nothing to the movie. Right. Except like she has a friend and this is their other activity aside from coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. OK. And then we have to really we have to drop the fucking hammer on this Peter plot line. So she's OK. So Peter had called her and said he couldn't make it to the. Hanukkah party because his boss wanted him to go to the game with her. Right? Uh -huh. So she stops by his place and it turns out that he's actually going to the game with his buddies. Oh, now we really know he's a dick. Yeah. Yep. He's not a good boyfriend at all. We've just been hit over the head constantly with the fact that he's a dick, which just solidifies what I said before, that there's no way they've been dating for longer than a month. Right, <laughs> right, because she shows up and she's like, hey, I thought you said you couldn't come because you were you know, your boss needed, you know, like was making you go to the game. And he's like, oh, right. No, but it was actually because I don't like being around you. <laughs> You're not cool with that. And she goes, no, I'm not good with that. And so she leaves. And I so wanted him to like call after. I was like, 
Okay, wait, are we broke up enough for me to fuck that barista now? Yeah, he, he might as well take off his overshirt and be like, what do you think of my new break up with me t-shirt, babe? Is it the best? <laughs> <laughs> and she's dressed up for Hanukkah. And it's so, it's such a stark contrast because the entire movie she's been wearing like straight up Christmas attire, just very stark green and red outfits. And now she's in Jew clothes. <laughs> yeah, she's yes, wearing she's blue. blue and white. Yeah. So, all right. So she goes to see Jonathan and uh, she's like, yeah, you know, it turns out I broke up with my boyfriend the day after you broke up with your girlfriend. And he's like, oh, that's great. Is this we're full blown act three? And she's like, yeah, it's almost the end of act three, actually. <laughs> now and he's like, all right, awesome. Rebound fuck. And she's like, uh, Hanukkah party. Hanukkah party. Yep. If that's that's what I wanted. exactly Hanukkah what party. I said, too, was Hanukkah party. Yeah. yeah. Also, I don't really think that you're supposed to invite random people <laughs> to the company's you... holiday party at the boss that you don't really know. Seems weird. Seems inappropriate. It's also a test. Well, and also it seems weird to bring a Jew to the like, <laughs> right? Because like at a certain point, it's just like she's almost trying to show up. Look at my Jewish friend. You know, like it just <laughs> seems weird at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave you gentlemen alone to discuss some money <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps properties you own oh and uh, wait he got her a present it's that backwards jewish book that she likes so much at little mitzvahs <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what would it even be it's in hebrew i don't know why would she know. want that <laughs> it makes no sense anyway so yeah so she invites him to the hanukkah party He's like, okay, I'll go there. And then they realize that they're standing under the parsley because he doesn't know Christmas well enough to get mistletoe. Oh, no. He went to the grocery store instead of the, Chris the Christmas what, store. What was supposed to have happened that he had rubber banded parsley hanging? Anyway, okay, fine. Stupid fucking movie. All right. So they go to the big fucking Hanukkah party. Everybody in the fucking movie has a mansion, but this guy has a mansion ear mansion. <laughs> he has a Jewier mansion. There you that's, go. That's okay. what it is. Sure. No, it's Jewier. All right. So, but she brought Hanukkah donuts, which they give this character such a weird scene. She's like, I brought you. And he's like, no, mine. I want them. And he like stuffs one into his weird <laughs> half red face. It was so and wild. It's such an insane choice. <laughs> yes. And also, like, I came to your party and brought you food. What the hell is going on? And he's like, hey, wouldn't you know it? It's time to light the menorah. How about you do that? Which is so wild. Which is so weird because, again, you're asking someone who isn't part of your religion to do your prayer. And he presents it to the party. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'd like you all to participate in my religion. <laughs> yes. And again, she was just invited to this party a week ago. Super last minute. Like, yeah. And now you're the main attraction. Yeah. So, right. So she does the prayer and we're, and we're supposed to be like, oh, can she do it? There were 14 whole words. But not only can she do it, not only does she nail the fucking prayer, she sings the fucking prayer, sings oh, it. Yeah. That's right. When literally two days ago, she couldn't eat. She was like, Bretch, a tie. Bretch, I totally. That's why she needed four rehearsals. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and then also, again, to undercut the plot of this stupid fucking movie, they go in the other room and they have a Christmas tree set up at this Hanukkah party because... Most Jews that live in America still do some Christmas shit. Yep. Too. And she was like, this would have been good to know a week ago, which literally just shatters the entire movie. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like it's just it's over. It's over now. Yeah. Now we know you shouldn't have made it. Oh, but while we're over by the Christmas tree, we learn that this movie has a bit of a twist. It turns out Edgar, the guy who was hiding, like disguised as a fucking bush and taking pictures of her plans, went to work for evil bad guy toy company and stole their stockbroker action figure idea. <laughs> so I watched this and then I was like, wait a second. Now we have a plot twist, but there's only eight minutes left in the movie. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I was like, is there a part two I'm supposed to be watching? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, but the boss man is actually, he says, he, he tells her, he's like, you know, I don't know, 
guys, don't tell anybody I said this, but I'm rooting for you over those assholes from Toys and Tricks who don't even know how to light a fucking menorah, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, I only hire Jews. I'm not allowed to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually only, I only really like the Jews. But then, of course, he also says, he's like, I sure hope your idea doesn't suck as bad as the congressional action figures with comic books that teach you about economics crap that that guy tried to sell us. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, no. Because that's exactly the idea that she had. Except she didn't even have that idea. Her shitty boyfriend did. (laughs) You're right. Yeah, exactly. And in the laziest choice of the movie, she now walks over to Jonathan and she's like, plot of the movie. Oh, no. And he's like, well, psh. That sure does sound tough. When I was a little boy, I used to pretend to be a Maccabee against the Greek. You remember that part of Hanukkah I made up earlier? And she's like, <laughs> Maccabees, one second. And runs out to the car oh while God. telling him to stall. Yeah, right, right. So she's like, you'll need to stall the party. Sing a Hanukkah song. He's like, can you tell him that it? you need five minutes? I feel like you could just say, <laughs> can you give nope. me five minutes? And he would say, yes, we're at a party. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was so insane that like (laughs) this entire week and a half, she has known that this was coming up and she needed to have a toy design and couldn't come up with anything aside what her shitty boyfriend said off the cuff. And then all of a sudden in five minutes, she's like, I've got it. Yeah, I've got the idea. Yep. Done. Right. But so she runs out to her car to change her prototype to like circumcise it. I don't know. She's gonna <laughs> do. yeah. She like tears its shirt or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rents its clothing. She puts a, a nose on it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, so he, he distracts him with his song while she does that. And she comes back in ready to do her presentation. And she's got Maccabee action figures because no one's ever thought of biblical action figures as a toy before. <laughs> yes. And, and I think we can all agree that it's a great idea that everyone would want. Yeah, yep. right. She literally comes to her boss and she's like, remember growing up as a Jew? Because I do. Uh, Yeah, right. She's like, remember when you were a kid and you had to pretend that your Star Wars figures were Maccabees because only 2.5% of America's population is Jewish and it would be crazy to mass produce products for that smallest sliver of people. (laughs) Yep. And and the boss is like, I do remember that. Well, I needed this. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like it, he, the way he stares at this thing, it's like he's had one of these inserted in him the whole time and he only needs to find one that's exactly <laughs> like it to coax it out, right? There's this weird, lovey kind of moment that he has. And he's like, and she, as she's explaining, you know what kids love is idolatry. We could do a David and a Ruth and an Esther and a little golden <laughs> calf that could follow him around and have wacky lines. And like without showing anybody else who matters at the company, he goes, we're going to mass produce it. It'll be out by April. And I'm like, (laughs) really? Do you know how production works? Have you have you it's spoken December to a single production line person? Because it's December. you're not getting in by you April. You can't even get the fucking mold by then. Were you? No, nope. <laughs> definitely me. not. You need more time to ship it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's okay. They're going to use all those leftover containers from Operation Warp Speed. So don't worry about it. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> so dark. Yeah, so so Edgar sees all of this, right? He sees her do the uh, the game-changing presentation, and he wanders off, and I'm expecting him to come back in with a gun given the way that he wanders off. <laughs> but no, we'll just never see him again. We established him as a villain two minutes ago, and now we're done with that character. Yeah, and now her and Jonathan are going to have a closed mouth. At least one of us is gay. The movie is over, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because she drags him under some real mistletoe. I have never seen less sexual chemistry oh. between two actors in a movie. Oh, it's they well, we been have because we do this for a living. But yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> outside of gam movies, no, not at this all. This is new to me, Noah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so they kiss. She gets the big promotion, and and he's like, "We're gonna have it out by April," and she's like. April and he's like oh you're gonna have it out for Passover and she's like now you'll have to teach me about Passover and ah. because they thought they were gonna get a sequel I guess wah, wah. <laughs> Passovers and p- p- patriarch I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll it. I don't know but I call dibs on being on that gam episode hell yeah <laughs> all right all right it's a deal all right so moral of the story 
Uh, if you're going to marry a goy, find one who's smarter than you. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, Rachel, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with us. We'd love to have you back on again soon. It would be my displeasure. All right. Well, there you go. That's all we ask. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Mistletoe and Menorahs. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still have more tacular to tackle. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, I think we can all agree that the only thing more tacular than my already Christmas tacular is if there were a tacular within a tacular. And nobody taculars like the sucker punching bigot. Eric Metaxas. So what? we'll be watching Christmas in New York. What? Starring Eric Metaxas. It's got sketch comedy. No. It's got music. No. And it's got Roseanne Barr as oh, a special guest. Fuck you. We may not make it out alive. Well, some of us may not anyway. So with that to look forward <laughs> to, we're going to bring up episode 278 to a merciful we'll close. Once again, a huge thanks to Rachel Wax for hanging out with us today. And a perhaps even a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that helped make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the other ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skin, The Game, The Citation, Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Guide, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotney of Evil Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then. We'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Maccabee's action figures went on to the bargain bin at Lifeway until they shut down in March of last year. <laughs> Christy and Jonathan lived happily ever after in the shitty gingerbread house he built. Christy's parents were not okay with her marrying a Jew. Like, not okay. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.